Tony Campolo, who I said you work with, Red Letter Christians, he's had a very well-publicised change of mind on, on that particular issue on gay marriage. He would now say that God would um, affirm loving, committed, same-sex relationships. So I wanted to ask you, have, have you been on a journey similar to Tony? Would you would you hold a traditional perspective on that? Um, or, or have you, like Tony, changed your mind and you would now say that God would, um, or God would be in favour of committed same-sex relationships? Mm-hmm. This is one of those things I've certainly like like many things I've I've been um as the scripture says we're working out our salvation with fear and trembling we're constantly in process and um on the death penalty I changed my mind right. I yeah. I was um uh, for the death penalty I'm, uh, uh, against it um um when it comes to sexuality there this is one of those things that I think is um incredibly complex and personal mm. to our community yep. um our, our communities had um sexual minorities for uh, from the very beginning for mm-hmm. 20 years um and um i i, I can I mark moments that were formative for me one of them was in college when a, a friend of mine was telling me that he um uh was gay and is gay and and he um wanted to kill himself because his whole life he felt like he was a mistake Mm -hmm. and he had gone he had tried to pray away the gay he had done all this you know and had demons cast all that stuff and he just said like this is where i'm at and i'm thinking if he can't hear and feel the love of jesus in the church then we've we've missed it um i um I also feel like um, some of the culture wars have made this really complicated because we end up talking a lot about sex, but not as much about love. And our deepest longing is to love and be loved. And I know from being mentored by a lot of celibate Catholic folks that you can go your whole life without having sex and you can experience love and community very deeply. I also know that there are a whole lot of folks that have sex but don't feel loved. Um, and so the starting point for us is that we want to create communities where people can love and be loved. And I kind of trust that the Spirit's moving in folks, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and this is very pastoral for me. like Because sure. I, I think, like, there's a lot of folks that go, can you, um, are you, f- the, our, our continuum, for our language is even unclear of affirming, you know. Are you fully affirming? Are you loving but not affirming, you know. and And you go, like, when I think of the heterosexual marriage, it's not like there's a broad brush. I think Donald Trump and I would probably have a very different understanding of the sacrament of marriage, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but, and yet, like, so I don't, I don't affirm every heterosexual marriage, but I think it's a pastoral thing. Right. And, 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 and so I trust pastors. I'm not a pastor, so I don't, right. I don't, I'm not ordained. I don't perform, I don't have the privilege of performing weddings, but um, I trust pastors to, to, um, discern that you know I, I think that it's um, uh, I, I do want to say in our communities um, and in our network even in the red letter Christians movement we don't all agree on, on right. this okay. um, we agree on love we mm-hmm. agree on community um, we have different understandings of yeah. same sex marriage uh, it's not the line in the sand yeah. um, for us um, but and, and this is why is that there's only like six or seven verses of the Bible that talk about same-sex attraction or mm-hmm. relationship, sexual relationships, and they're very different yeah. from how we're talking about monogamous, equi- you know, e- equal relationships of lifelong partners. That was a foreign idea to the, the those contexts, which were much more about abuse and exploitation and of men and women in those situations, you know. And so um, that that makes it that makes it really um, a difficult. Um, so at the end of the day, I I I, I know a. a uh, that Christians who love Jesus, who love the Bible, can arrive in different places. I believe a tree is known by its fruit. Mm-hmm. I have friends that are in lifelong monogamous partnerships of the same gender, and the fruit of their life looks like Jesus. It looks like everything that I know is beautiful, and I, I celebrate that with them. Um, yeah, and, and I, I am heartbroken by the way that the church is not a, able to hold tension and to um, discern this together. The Methodist Church, right, just had an epic fail where they excluded all the affirming 
you know, congregations and folks in the Methodist church, there was a proposal that would hold the tensions and allow individual churches, even conferences to, to disagree and still mm. walk together as a united right. church. Um, but there are progressive circles yeah. that are also um, in danger of saying, this is our line. And yeah. if you, if you don't, fully affirm same-sex marriage, you can't speak or you're not welcome here. So I don't think that more exclusion is the answer. I think a deeper conversation and a deep listening and yeah. respect is so, the answer. So for you, it's it's not an issue where you would kind of draw boundaries on and say, this is a make or break issue for, for me working with you or for what it means to be a Christian. And for you, for you, I guess the debate around what is sexually immoral is not a big enough issue to divide church over or to exclude over? It's one of those things where I work with churches, pastors, organizations that are on diff- right. that disagree with each other on it. And, uh, and I want to stay engaged. Mm. Uh, I want to be, be a bridge builder. I want to be, fo- be able to speak into the context with folks that are leaning in and maybe, you know, becoming more welcoming, um, and affirming of, of folks. Um, yeah. And for organizations that say, this is a deal breaker for us. Yeah. And I have it on both sides. I have folks like this in, in the last few months, I've had folks call me and to pa- see if I pass the litmus test, wow. you know, and they've said, so if you will not say publicly that you affirm same sex marriage, you cannot speak. I've also had folks say, if you say publicly, you affirm same sex marriage, you cannot speak. And that's why. I'm not timid about it. I, I, I've been talking about this for 20 years and I stand by everything that I've said. If people want like, you know, a, st- I think statements are cheap, you know, and right. they, and they're, yeah. they're often meant to like put, Oh, you're with them. You're with them. And I, um, I, I, I just, uh, I, I'm resistant of that. It's okay. not that I don't have convictions on this or love on this. I, I, uh, or feel passionately on this, but I, I just don't, uh, think this should be the line in the sand that we exclude people from our communities in conversation because mm-hmm. we disagree. Yeah. And we've held that tension for years. And you mentioned Tony. Incidentally, Tony and Peggy disagreed on this for years and had a wonderful debate, you know, that, that everybody should watch. <laughs> um, there's a video of it. But then the, at the end of it, they would say, well, we disagree and we're still able to go sleep together, you know, and if they can still sleep together, the church sure as heck should be able to still worship together. 